Uh, well, uh, this example here um, uh, demonstrates the use of new and um, super with uh, anonymous classes. And uh, I've uh, made this uh, very complex uh, structure of classes here just to show as many different features as I can and uh, just to prove that there's nothing really difficult about it. Okay, so, right, we've got this P here and it's of um, type P5, which of course is really P1 dot P2 dot etc. up to P5. As you can see, they're all class P1 here, got P2 in it, and in that you've got P3, and in that you've got P4, and in that you've got P5. Some of these are abstract, and some of them are static, and so on. So here's how you uh, create an anonymous class to uh, satisfy that. Anyway, you start with new, and you do P1.P2.P3. You hear that because um, these are all static here. Yeah? P2 is static, and uh, P3 is uh, static. That's all. So we get down to P3 and we can just go straight in at that level because they're all static um, all static um, member classes up to P3. So we can get to P3 and just do the U of that. Okay, so that's that's straightforward. And then of course we've got to pass what we've created into um, uh, to the constructor for P4. Except I've got to be a little bit careful because it's an abstract class. So uh, we do new like that, follow it, so it'll cause the constructor to be passed into the next thing we do. And because this is P4's abstract, we have to create a concrete subclass of it, which we can do, of course, by using an anonymous class. So we do P4, like that, create an anonymous class for that. Uh, anonymous, uh, uh, anonymous subclass of uh, P4 that we'll create. And, uh, well, we put something in it. You can see P4 has got this abstract uh, method N here, so we've got to override that by putting some concrete implementation in. What should we do like that? So that does that, that's got us down to P4, and then we need to pass that into P5. So we do dot new and then P5. And uh, just for good measure, because you can, you can override uh, P5 as well. And just to prove the point, I've uh, added a, a method in there. Not that that, that would be much use because you've got no way to really call it. But uh, uh, just to prove the point that you can you can do that. Okay, so that wasn't really too difficult, I hope. Right, here's an example now where we uh, have this class EX here which extends um, P5. And uh, the way to do that is, well, here's the constructor for EX. And now we need um, we need to call the superclass. And the superclass is P5, so we do in fact more or less the same thing. Um, there we go down to there to do to create a P3, and that version of P3 has got to be passed into P4. Uh, people's uh, well subclass of people's constructor. Create a subclass of it there. Of course, what you put in here. Um, need not be the same as what you put in there because even if it is the same it uh, won't be the same class involved in each time in each, each case because um, it's uh, an anonymous class so it's got a different number a different name effectively and uh, when we get down to there of course we need to uh, then pass that rod into super which we do like that now of course if you happen to have um, an instance of um, P4 lying around is, uh, rather I should say, an instance of a uh, pseudo subclass of P4. You could uh, just use that as the enclosing class, but uh, here I'm doing everything from scratch. So if I had an instance of uh, um, a subclass of P4 lying around, I could uh, just use a reference to that dot super instead of all this lot. But uh, here I've just made it from scratch. Okay, here's uh, just to uh, show something else. Um, there's p1.p2, which is uh, an instance of this here. And of course, uh, I could just say new p1.p2. But instead of doing that, what I'll do is create an instance uh, of a uh, uh, subclass of that. Um, in other words, we, we, we create an anonymous class of uh, anonymous subclass of p1.p2, like that. And um, then, of course, rather than simply uh, return 
that into p12 what I'll do is uh, I'll call a method within it this method reset there which um, comes to return a p1 dot p2 so instead of um, so instead of uh, just uh, storing that straight away in p1 dot p2 I'm, I'm calling this first and then reset and the effect of reset as it happens it returns returns this which is the current class which you just made but of course in theory it could return a different uh, class if I had another if I had another um, uh, another instance of p1 dot p2 lying around I could pick that up and return it instead and then it wouldn't be the class that you just created it got returned that of course is very bad programming you shouldn't do that but um, I'm just trying to show as many different uh, features and awkward things that could happen of course you should never do that it would be a really irregular sort of thing to do people wouldn't expect it in fact people wouldn't really expect this either but uh, occasionally you see this sort of thing happening um, ok that's uh, probably as much as I want to show there